Praised be Jesus and Mary. O God, who in your mercy led Saint Clara to a love of poverty, grant through her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit, we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom. Saint Clara of Assisi was born around 1193 maybe 1194, historians disagree, in Assisi to a noble family. This noble family of hers was rich and powerful and her parents expected her to make their social status increase by marrying somebody from another rich and powerful noble family. Such was the custom of those times. But St. Clara surprised all of them when she decided to follow the example of St. Francis of Assisi, who at that time was living a life of poverty for the love of God. And she wanted to embrace his example, to renounce the riches that the world offer her, offered her for the sake of the love of God. And she did that. On Palm Sunday of 1212, she consecrated herself to God. Soon after, she took up residence in the monastery of San Damiano, where she spent the rest of her life until her death, which took place in 1253. Much of her life being confined to bed and not being able to do anything then other than praying to God and offering her sufferings to him. Reflecting on her life, And on her decision to embrace poverty voluntarily, we think of her, her family, who when they found out of her decision, first reacted with sadness and then confusion and even violent anger, trying to stop her. It was difficult for them to understand what St. Clair was doing because she wasn't running away from something evil. They weren't telling her to do something sinful, like give up the faith or commit a sin. It's okay to marry, and it's okay even to be rich in this world. That's not incompatible with holiness. So they couldn't get it. It went beyond them why St. Clair would have done such a thing, because it went beyond them, went beyond their generosity to understand that free will given to us by God can be used not only to reject evil and to choose good, but we can use our free will to forego what's merely good in order to embrace what's better. They didn't understand that some things in this world, though good, can and, and even should be renounced for the sake of better things. St. Paul tells us in the second reading today, we fix our gaze on what is seen. We rather do not fix our gaze on what is seen, but on what is unseen. What is seen is transitory. What is unseen lasts forever. Some things that are seen on this world, earthly riches are good, but they're transitory. It's good to give some of them up in order to possess more fully those things that are unseen, the things that last forever, God and the things of God. But they couldn't understand that. That's why they were led to sadness and then confusion and even violent anger. Where St. Clair did understand that, that to have this something better that God wants to offer us, we have to renounce and sometimes painfully renounce what's merely good in order to have the author of all good, God himself. St. Clair, unique because she gave up everything in this world like St. Francis of Assisi. We can't maybe imitate her literally in everything, but we can discern what in our life is good, but maybe not beneficial. What our Lord is calling us to renounce. What degree of poverty is he inspiring us to follow in order to possess him, even on earth, more fully? He's calling us to enter into the gospel logic of, of poverty, typically Franciscan. Being rich, but not with earthly things, again, not necessarily bad or earthly things, but they can't make us rich. What does make us rich is God himself, having not our will, but God's, not the things of God, but God himself, not just what's good, but what's 
better. Nothing for ourselves in order to possess God and nothing else. God is better than all the good things and even very good things of this world. If we do that, like St. Francis of Assisi, like St. Clare of Assisi, we'll discover richness in poverty, that joy in the, and that peace that the world doesn't know and can't offer. If only we follow their example, if only we too make those choices, difficult to understand, but liberating and truly evangelical, sacrificing what's merely good in order to pursue what's better, not going after what is seen but transitory, but what is unseen, what is heavenly, and what lasts forever. Praised be Jesus and Mary.